Welcome back everybody to another episode of building the Mark 4.5 reactor. So we left off, We I had put the tank up on wheels and everything. Uh, well not on wheels, but we got it pretty much done, like the man way on there. And it's standing up on its own, right, with its own legs. Now we got to add these rails, you could say, so that way we can put wheel, wheels on it. Because I'll tell you right now, after moving this thing around by hand, just pushing it about like it's the Ark of the Covenant by myself is absolutely worn out my shoulders so I'm like I gotta get these casters on here ASAP so I took some uh, some long six foot pieces of angle iron here and drilled holes through them be a little bit perspicacious drill the holes now because I know I'm gonna put the casters in and uh, also patreon as well so thank you all very much we go ahead well those two there and I got these crossbars of rebar which are going to be trusses pretty much see i want them in between just to make sure that the angle iron you know doesn't get pushed in or pushed out under weight uh and i didn't think that we needed any uh any extra trusses because the angle iron rails that are going to go across for the wheels are pretty much going to be those uh i guess that's lat lateral or lo longitudinal longitudinal uh, trusses in that way right kind of tying together the angle iron from moving front or back right so between all those different um, supports we have they're gonna be pretty stable pretty solid so that's essentially what I had done here of course it's sped up for your convenience and mine but it was a little bit of a pain to get these things lined up with each other because you know it doesn't have to be perfect it's not gonna really affect anything if they aren't lined up but it will look stupid it will look crooked you know we don't want the reactor to look like it has some type of you know um <clears throat> issue with it just from the surface level looking at it down and then its legs are like it has one leg misshapen or misplaced from another one so then i put on these casters that you see now look you're looking at this it's sped up it looks easy but you know this reactor is just under being too big to where i cannot pick this thing up by hand so after we got the wheels on there I know what's up, I know what's down, so now I can finally start to put on the inlet and outlet pipes. Very exciting. This is where we're going to feed in the plastic. I tried this new method, I call it like the, the pie pizza cutter method, where you just cut out a trillion triangles and cut the circle around. Honestly, the circle did not turn out as clean as when I just cut it out regularly. So, I'm never going to do that again. And you get all the extra pieces of metal too that just get all up in the hole that you cut out. So, yeah, never doing that little trillion triangle method again for cutting a circle in metal. It's literally better to just trace the circular line, have your um, cutting disc a little bit shorter or a little bit worn, so that way you can get in between the curves better and not have straight lines. But, anyways, you know the circle was really rough had to spend a long time polishing it out because this unfortunately this is the most important circle to be the cleanest because this is where the plastic is going to fall in so if there's rough edges and it's not flush plastic will get you know trapped very important to make this a level because this is the foundation of where we load in plastic if it's like leaning or anything like that then the plastic is, may not fall down in there straight so i definitely took my time with all of these you know inlet and outlet pipes to make sure they were absolutely level for that exact reason both ways because you know that would just be a shame to weld this thing on there and uh yeah have to redo it pretty much so next the discharge port discharge port for the carbon so uh, unfortunately there's a bad angle you barely can see me cutting it out but i cut out that circle the traditional way just tracing the line worked fine pretty much perfect cut uh, right from the get-go make sure that thing is level boom welded on now unfortunately i should have covered up the man way as i was uh welding this because you see i'm so close to it you see all those sparks hitting the stainless steel pretty much contaminates the stainless steel and makes it rust so unfortunately pretty much the whole underside of the man way at this point forward has to be painted including all the little um screws and stuff we're also going to rust at least at some points of them where all these little uh flux core carbon steel sparks hit and land onto the stainless steel i wasn't thinking there very much but anyways discharge port welded on and once i welded it on you know i welded the heck out of this because here's the thing right i flipped this whole reactor over which is by the way was an absolute pain right and think about it i need to make sure there's airtight weld right like it cannot leak and i don't want to have to flip this thing over again after i realized like oh i got a little pinhole or something or even get under there to weld it right so i'm like i'm just gonna 
you know, just absolutely batter this thing with welds to get it done. Because I know if I do three really good welds, more than likely it's airtight. So did that next. Have to start to open up this hole for the shaft. Now this is the original hole where the propane nozzle comes out. And the good thing about this is that we already know this hole is perfectly centered. The machine did that. We don't have to guess or do some type of sacred geometrical calculus crap to figure out the center of a circle of a of a, a dome. Like that's just a bunch of nonsense to me. So I'm like, that's the best the best thing about the propane tanks. They already got the hole in there centered for me anyway, right? Because you don't have the hole centered, the shaft you won't be centered, and it's just some nonsense. So I had to make the hole bigger because that was a three-fourths uh, pipe but we're using a one-inch shaft so I had to expand the hole to a little bit over one inch on the internal diameter so I did that with a good old step drill and now look at her we got the um, manway on got her standing up on the, the wheels looking real nice fine and dandy a lot of hard work to get to this point and a lot more to do but it's great to see it coming along. So what am I doing now? Well, I had to start constructing the blade. You know, we use shaftless auger blades in these reactors to spin the plastic and rotate it down, the shredded plastic. And I had to find something that's the perfect circumference. Uh, the perfect circumference to the point where it's big enough to cover enough of the area for the reactor, but not too big to where it's gonna get caught on things. And this umbrella Ella stand was perfect actually, because here's the thing, these propane tanks have in Internal rings on the inside that you can't see and those internal rings also it has to clear those as well or you know, the blades are not gonna fit so the the umbrella Ella stand in both of those things so it was the perfect shape so you trace that and you trace something um, smaller for the internal circle that you cut out to make the shaftless auger and boom there you go you see that's what I did and you know I know everybody's gonna be like Nature Jack, why don't you have a plasma cutter? Nature Jack, why don't you have a CNC? Nature Jack, why don't you have a water jet? I say Nature Jab, why don't you suck Nature Jab's balls? Because guess what? I don't have that stuff. And I'm not about to go and get it, you know, going over budget just to get something I'm gonna use once. I will sit here and cut this stuff by hand. The thing is, uh, perfection with this does not really matter as much with these blades. I mean, because here's the truth, right? If I'm building this reactor by hand, if I'm putting on a shaft by hand, if I'm doing any of this stuff by hand without the ro robots and machines, I can have the perfect diameter blades and still jack stuff up. So, Fortunately, that's kind of why we make sure that they are pretty um, loose tolerantly. Now, the good thing about these blades is as long as they're like hitting the belly of the machine, they're going to move the plastic along. It doesn't matter if they're all a little bit of a different diameter. I know this because I've done this before from experience. Mark IV reactor, you know, I cut those out by hand the same way. I mean, even if I cut them with a plasma cutter, they're still all going to be a little bit different. I literally got to have a CNC laser Raleigh Eva robot thing, Tony Stark. To make sure that these will all be the perfect size and even then when you go to grind all off the drops they're going to get a little bit shorter than that too and then that might be a little bit inconsistent so in short unless you have a crazy setup more than likely all your blades will be a little bit of a different diameter but they're especially going to be a different diameter when you do it like me putting it out by hand right and tracing every single one you cut out just not going to be a consistent diameter but that's okay because for the most part since we measured something that had so much extra clearance even if some are a little bit bigger uh, it'll be fine. Ones that are a little bit too smaller, usually that won't be a big deal either, uh, because just the nature of shaftless auger blades, the weight of them is going to pretty much pull them down to the belly of the machine, and as long as they're touching the belly, they're going to move the plastic along. So that's what we did here. Very long process to cut them out. Goodness gracious. Crikey almighty, that thing sucked. Cut out 36 of them total, because I'm going to make them two-ply, so they're a little bit thicker, but that's what I've done here. 36 circles cut out and that took almost um three or four days just to cut all of them out you know because your wrist hurt you got to take breaks and this process was the worst process right here having to then go through with my grinder and then just get off all the sharp parts you know how it is if microwaves hit the sharp parts of metal it will form an antenna and then it will ground up to the body of the reactor forming plasma which wastes a lot of microwave energy that could have gone to heating up the plastic so i have to actually go through and pretty much smoothen out from the inside and outside every single blade and i know you're like oh it's just 36 blades uh it's just simple smoothing out trust me let me tell you something each blade took at least 15 minutes 10 15 minutes 36 do the math that's a long time your wrist hurt and a lot of this had to be do done one-handed because i had to hold it with one hand do this with the other hand just because of the angles of stuff this was an absolute pain honestly i hated this more than cutting them out and it was in this moment where i'm like this is the last reactor i'm building by hand because i had to make these long blades more work than any 
you know, blades I've built before. I don't want to ever build any bigger of blades by hand again <laughs> because that was rough. So to stretch out the blades is actually pretty easy because they're pretty thin metal, um, unfortunately. You know, the good thing is it doesn't really matter all that much because plastic is not something that like get, really gets caked up or heavy like that. Like I said, they're not having any problems on Mark IV. So it's pretty easy to stretch out. You just hold them on one thing and you stretch it on there like you saw there. And after that, I'm just welding them together over time like a giant slinky pretty much. I mean, guys, come on now. Let's be honest. This thing is like a, it's, it's a drake. It's flopping all about little springiness to it too you know gotta lube it up as well on the inside of the machine with the oils from pyrolysis i mean it's pretty much the exact bloody thing and it's a very big thing too so it literally meets all the characteristics you know what i'm saying if it looks like a drake if it sounds like a drake it's a drake right it's not a dog so anyways still got welding to do on these things the welding wasn't that bad to be honest i mean it was a lot it was tedious but i you know at least my wrists weren't hurting my wrists didn't feel like you know they just got punched by Mike Tyson. Uh, and then there we go. There's the blades. Uh, over a hundred inches of blades there. Or maybe just under a hundred. Thank you very much for watching. 